गोइंग अहेड लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस सी ए संजय के अग्रवाल जी इज अ रोनोन फैकल्टी एंड अ स्पीकर ऑन डायरेक्ट टैक्स सर एज डेलिब्रेटेड इन हंड्रेड एंड हंड्रेड ऑफ सेमिनार्स एट वेरियस नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल प्लेटफॉर्म्स ही हैज ओवर थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ विविड एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ इनकम टैक्स इन्वेस्टिगेशन सी आई टी अपील्स इनकम टैक्स अपिलियट ट्रिब्यूनल टैक्स रिट्स एम आई एस एडवाइजरी मैनेजमेंट कंसल्टेंसी एंड कॉर्पोरेट एडवाइजरी सर्विसेज आई वॉन्ट टेक लॉन्ग टू इंट्रोड्यूस सर एंड अगेन वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ वेपटेल संजय सर थैंक यू वेरी मच शुभम जी आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर लाउड एंड क्लियर सर Yeah. Very much, Sanjay Babu. Very much. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. 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 Great. Welcome. Welcome to this August. Yeah. Program. And uh, I salute uh, my elder brother in the council. When I was there, he was my mentor to guide me. And uh, when we were uh, together in the regional council, and he was in central council, a lot of support have already been given. And I always adore his, uh, uh, you can say, the words and uh, the. incentives or whatever he gives uh, the other person can never repay so nanda ji is uh, one of the you can say uh, mentors for us also uh, shubham ji thank you very much and uh, i am also thankful to rajiv bhai for organizing the uh, this first cut out session wherein uh, still some of the nuances are under study and uh, i hope uh, will be able to Uh, get something more about it so uh, without doubting it that uh, uh, even uh, because of the lot of uh, dip in the uh, economy uh, because of the covid like situation one uh, was expecting some of the levies uh, which uh, will be uh, you can say levied by the finance minister but uh, to our surprise there is no change in the taxation however also there is nothing uh, relief which has been given in the form of some uh, announcement in the deductions or in the slab rate which was much talked uh, in the uh, pipeline but uh, let me tell you friends uh, when this budget uh, was to be uh, presented uh, i think uh, something uh, which must have been uh, uh, wavering the mind of the honorable finance minister that where to give and where to take and that is the biggest problem uh, for any person in country like us where thousands of crores of pe- people are there and uh, the tax payers are limited in number but uh, let me tell you friends uh, before i go for my direct tax uh, proposal uh, the rupee which will come into the uh, main coffer of the government out of that uh, 15% is on account of gst because a uh, lot of boost uh, is there and uh, government is uh, going about the uh, you can say the collection of the gst and uh, to my surprise the income tax is also 15% but uh, the uh, you can say the worry part is this that uh, the borrowings are at a very high stage they are at a 36% and it means One rupee which goes to the government, out of that one rupee, thirty-six paisa is on account of borrowing. And when I talk about how the amount to be spent, then uh, though I know it that a uh, uh, lot of uh, demands are made by states and everywhere, but the point which is to be kept in mind that out of thirty-six paisa, the sixteen paisa is uh, on account of the state uh, share of taxes which is there uh, which is to be given and uh, 20 paisa is on account of interest payment so uh, the uh, point is this that uh, this need to be taken care uh, in the coming years after the covid is over and uh, the borrowing is to be reduced or borrowing are not supposed to be repaid in the form of the interest so this is something which i wanted to tell you uh, in uh, you can say overall situation now i give you uh, another that uh, this particular budget 
because of the direct taxes, uh, it is being divided into four parts. One is rates, then the tax incentives, what they are offering in this budget, and then the removing the difficulties. A lot of difficulties have been removed in the this budget, and it has become the you can say now the one of the uh, big portion of the amendment by the government that they remove the difficulty faced by the taxpayer. And then there are certain rationalization of the provisions. So the budget has been divided into these two parts. I have Mr. Juneja also, uh, who will be covering on the parts uh, which are uh, in relation to the uh, time limits, advanced ruling, ITAT faceless provisions, then uh, about 44 ADA, IFSC, depreciation on goodwill, etc. So I'll not be touching on those uh, aspects. So the first incentive which has given in the form of the cash uh, on account of LTC, uh, there are certain conditions which have they have laid down. Now up to 236,000, you can get the LTC for this year between 12th October 22, 31st March 21, without even traveling. But the conditions which are there regarding the uh, spending the amount on goods and services wherein you must have also paid through an account pay the GST exceeding 12% or more than 12%. So this is something, a unique idea this government wanted to bring. At the time, they wanted to give to the taxpayer a money which is tax-free, but at the same time, out of that, if money is to be taken from the taxpayer for the purpose of the development of the economy in the form of the spending and collection of the GST by way of spending. So instead of, let us say, in the smaller taxpayer, a 20% tax leaving, the government wanted to take that money by way of 12% and above on account of GST. There are certain other conditions. Uh, it is to be through an account pay check, and this amendment have been made by clause five. I'm not going into the details because it will take a lot of time. Then uh, the affordable uh, rental housing is also, they have increased uh, the one more year in this. And if you are uh, uh, getting an approval of ATIBA project, and you are delayed because of the COVID situation, or you wanted that it to approve, then up to 31st March 22, you can get your project approved in the affordable housing sector. Then uh, uh, there are certain amendment of IFSC, which uh, my friend Juneja uh, ji will uh, take. Now I take you to the issues of the zero coupon bond. Now, some of the infrastructure debt funds have been allowed after the approval to issue zero coupon bond. Zero coupon bond is a bond by which the funds are influxed in the economy without having any, you can say, burden on account of the outflow of dividend or the interest payment at the time of the issue. So this is what they have uh, in, in uh, the infrastructure uh, debt funds were also allowed to uh, invest in this. Let me tell you, friends, I have been told that in Japan, if you are keeping the money in the bank account, they will charge you the money out of that. Means they will take from you instead of giving the interest, they will charge interest on you. And as such, all such investments are new made in the other country. So this is one of the place where the investment will be made by these uh, funds in the economy of the India. Now, the next is regarding the urban cooperative banking uh, sectors. There is uh, the merger or something is there, 1044 DB uh, about the business reorganization of cooperative banks talks about it. And in case of talk, uh, these uh, mergers of the uh, cooperative banks, what happens that uh, there are certain incentives which are given in the form of Section 32, enhanced rate of depreciation, 35D, 
35 double D, 35 double D A. So all these uh, incentives are lost uh, to the to the institution, which goes and merge into the another one. Now the government has found a very unique idea. Now what they say, if suppose a particular cooperative bank merged after let us say 200 days, and up to 200 days he has to or that is the cooperative bank has to pay the taxes. Now all these deductions has to be given to the entity who is holding on the last day of the financial year. So what they have done, they have divided proportionately in respect of number of days for this merger or business reorganization, you can say. It's a beautiful idea of uh, taxing the right person and the right uh, period also. Then a uh, lot of uh, strategic disinvestment is being uh, uh, planned in the uh, this year also. And uh, as it is said that a uh, lot of uh, uh, PSUs are going to be uh, disinvested in this year. And as such explanation six to section two of 19AA have been also uh, amended along with section 72A uh, one as well as one a and small a by way of clause three and twenty two because uh, the uh, respective uh, you can say incentives or uh, the carryover of losses or other incentives uh, will not be given uh, for the purpose of disinvestment so they have tried to provide the person those who are uh, investing in all these uh, PSUs to get them the uh, real incentive also in form of the these sections which I have mentioned. Now, the uh, similarly, uh, they have uh, extended uh, the deduction in respect of ATEEA that is regarding the uh, loan which you have taken for the affordable housing. This period has also been increased uh, for uh, 31st March 22, and a deduction of 1 lakh 50 thousand uh, was proposed in the last year. So this is something what they have uh, done. So far as the startup, as uh, Nandaji has also said, they have provided uh, startup certain benefits uh, in the form of ATIAC and uh, 54 capital B. This uh, have been extended up to 31st March 22. The next uh, amendment which has been given in the form of the incentive is to the safe harbor rule in the domestic taxation in uh, the cases of the business, uh, uh, you can say developers or the builders, those who are selling the properties as uh, distress uh, because of the circle rates are higher. So earlier it was 5%, uh, then it was increased to 10%, and then now it is 20% any property by a builder which is being sold to a to a buyer home buyer will not be subject to deemed taxation for if that particular property is being sold between 12th of november of 2020 and 30th june 21 so if you are uh, uh, buying a house then uh, in that case it will also not be taxable as a deeming income in the hands of the investor, as well as in the hands of the uh, builder. But this particular direction or safe harbor rule is not available for individual seller and buyer. There, the safe harbor rule is only up to 10%. A uh, lot of have been said by Honorable uh, Finance Minister about the uh, ease to senior citizens, uh, those who are 75 plus that uh, they will not be required to file the return, but the conditions are very strict. If you have only pension income and interest income in only one bank, and where the prescribed bank takes the responsibility of deducting the tax on your interest and pension income, and also take the responsibility of giving you the benefit of chapter 6A investment, as well as any 87 capital A benefit. And then in that case, the senior citizens, those who are 75 plus, but if 
they have any other income like house property capital gain then in that case this particular benefit is not available to them i hope when a uh, lot of demands will come so the uh, government will reconsider this point and they will put a some threshold limit on uh, the senior citizenship income where if the tax has been deducted properly in that case they are not required to file the return also so this is uh, something uh, a unique uh, point once again next is the sovereign wealth fund and pension fund they are now given a lot of uh, benefits and incentive i am not taking much of the time because uh, i know that there are limitation of time but these investment funds are allowed to uh, uh, invest through holding companies uh, through lo uh, loan and borrowing then in nbfc company there are certain uh, restrictions on the commercial activities by these sovereign funds so this is something which is very important in the uh, this uh, this uh, you can say this is uh, a very large investment area the next is the mismatch in the uh, people those who come to our country uh, while they were they are young they remain in the other country but at the same time because in the foreign countries they have to invest certain amounts for their retirement like the pension in the india for the government sector the which is uh, now not provided and they are given the nps national pension scheme so the in the uh, you can say uh, third world country uh, there is a system of investing into your uh, salaries or your income partly into this pension funds so what happens that uh, the taxes on those uh, pension funds are paid by the uh, you can say the then citizens or the uh, indians in that country on receipt basis however in india it is charged on accrual basis so now to make it par they are going to uh, remove this mismatch uh, Uh, situation and they will be subject to taxation uh, the rules will be prescribed for it so this is what a new thing similarly in the case of mat there are a lot of uh, adjustment which are made uh, because of advance pricing agreement or there are uh, you can say secondary adjustment with the assessee except those who are dealing in the international tax they know it that sometime they do not want to litigate and they pay uh, the secondary adjustment taxes and this results into the uh, you can say revision of the earlier year uh, their uh, financials and as such the government have provided the benefit of rectifying such things and uh, also uh, the giving the benefit of dtwa in respect of any dividend which has been disclosed because of the adjustment given in section 92 ce and 92 double c on account of advance pricing agreements the next is the tds uh, on the business trust is uh, not required to be deducted and as such they have rationalized for the financial foreign financial institution and uh, the 44 ab threshold limit everybody is talking about but let me tell you friends uh, it is should not to be treated as that there is a loss of uh, any opportunity to the chartered accountant but at the same time a lot of other uh, uh, you can say uh, the opportunities are there in the form of the investment and in the forms of various schemes which are there similarly uh, is the people those who are getting the dividend sometimes they are getting the dividend after the passing of the date of the advance tax and they have to pay the interest on the deferment because they do not know at that time at the time of the advance tax installment whether the dividend will come but the tax is to be levied on the percentage basis of the annual income the same uh, problem was there in the capital gain also so the capital gain if you earn then you have to pay advance tax in the quarter in which you earn and you have to pay the balance tax of the earlier quarter also in the quarter in which you earn the income the same have been done in case of the dividend 
now you have to pay the uh, uh, taxes advance tax only in the quarter when you earn the dividend also so uh, this is the uh, some of the amendment uh, which are there similarly they have increased the limit for the registration of the education institution and uh, the hospitals from 1 crore to 5 crore you need not now from 21 onward not to register if you are having an education institution or an hospital up to 5 crore this is the good step which they have taken uh, for take claiming the deduction under 1023 capital c3 ad and ae uh, this is pre filled return uh, i have already said i do not want to say anything the revised return is now restricted as uh, it has been said by rajiv bhai also that the time has been reduced and it is 31st december now defective return also lot of uh, returns have been declared as defective and then people face 148 so now the board has taken the power to uh, define redefine the uh, defective return also one of the biggest controversy of the employee share of pf in esi if it is paid even one day late it is not allowed by the income tax however there are lot of judgments where in in the high courts it has been allowed and the lot of litigation has been going on in account of adjustment under section 1431a if of the disallowance of non payment of employee shares uh, on the pf and esi and superannuation funds now the amendment have been made it has been made clarified from assessment year 21 22 that no case no deduction will be given on account of even single day single day delay neither in 36 nor in 43b so far as employee share is concerned ye amanat mein halalat hai isliye jo hai government iske against mein hai drc because they have removed settlement commission and as such there is no you can say grievance uh, redressal uh, for the certain cases so they have uh, brought it drc committees will be formed when in such cases up to 50 lakh rupees of income can be settled in respect of normal search or in respect of the uh, you can say double taxation also advance ruling my friend will take and these are the few major amendments